Uh, we have over 400 right now absentee requests. So those are also walk-ins, and those are also people that we have, voters we have mailed out ballots to. So those are college students, um, permanently disabled that are on our list, and so forth. Um, but I know one of the big topics, and it's, of course, all over the news, is these mail-in ballots. So let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, mail-in ballots, uh, Missouri legislators passed a law that you could request a mail-in ballot for the August primary and the November 3rd general election. Now, in Missouri, you do have to um, call us, apply in person, or apply by mail for a mail-in. It's two separate things, a mail-in and an absentee. So a mail-in you have to request by mail or in person. The ballot has to be mailed out. But we will not mail anything to any voter unless that voter calls or requests it by mail there's or no, in there's person. There's no automatic ballots being mailed out no, to people. No, yeah. not in Missouri. So once that voter decides if they want to mail in, they can request that. We will mail them the ballot. Once they vote it, they do have to take it to a notary. They do have to get it notarized, and they may pay for that. They have to mail it back. It has to be received back in our office by Election Day, 7 p.m. We've only had two in August. We've had four for the November. So absentees, totally separate. So you can request an absentee ballot for several different reasons. If you're absent on election day, you're ill or disabled, you're a caretaker, and with the new law for the November election due to COVID-19. So um, those are some reasons you can vote absentee. Um, our office is open Monday through Friday, 8 to 430. You can walk in. You bring your ID with you. Um, any form of government ID works, but we have to see your ID. Once we see your ID, we process you, give you your ballot, and you vote, and you actually run it through the machine at that time. I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> we had a we heard it strange deep. sound here. I'd heard it earlier, and I'm afraid I, I it's my phone. I'm trying to make sure the ring is Daryl's checking off. his cell phone there. Angie, uh -huh. what are some of those? Uh, uh, I know there are a number of criteria that would cause a person to be eligible to get that absentee ballot that normally doesn't. They're not out of town, but they are eligible because of COVID-19 mm -hmm. to receive that, to get an absentee ballot. Mm -hmm. are they if you're over 65, if you have health issues, um, any type of illness, disability, or you're a caretaker of someone that's ill or disabled, um, you can request an absentee ballot. We will mail you one, or you can walk in and vote. Either way. Either way. Yeah. So. And there is some rules regarding notary. So if you're absent on election day and you need us to mail you a ballot, an absentee ballot, you do have to get that notarized. Okay. All absentee ballots have to be notarized, or no. just the, just them. Just the just mail -in. just the ones that yeah. are absent. Okay. From the city or county that you're registered in see that's how easy it can become very confusing, confusing. it so is we'll get through it though we and will folks just you know if you don't understand angie and her girls and her office can explain it to you again and again and again mm -hmm. and i think how many times a day are you explaining mm -hmm. it yeah i know you have no idea so. well we're getting several calls all day long consistently sure. and that's great we want voters to feel like they're you know they're educated they know what's going on and they can feel like their vote is safe it's secure I really feel like Missouri has some good standards in place um, so I feel like everything's pretty secure safe and we try to be as efficient as we can and answer those questions so that's what we're there for they can call the office at 729 4144 anytime and and we'll be glad to answer anything um, we do have some deadlines coming up mm -hmm. so october 7th next wednesday is the deadline to register to vote um, we also have a deadline to mail out an absentee ballot or mail out a mail-in ballot request and that is october 21st the applicant has to be that's the deadline by 5 p.m 
Wednesday, October 21st. Now you can walk into my office and vote absentee up until the day before the election, November 2nd, by 5 p.m. We will also be open Saturday, October 31st, 8 to noon, for those that need to come in on a Saturday and vote absentee. We have a lot of workers, truck drivers, college students that will be in that weekend to vote absentee. So we have all the, the stop gaps in place for the election in Missouri to be conducted properly and not have some of the horror stories we've been hearing on the news about ballots sent in, absentee ballots being sent in and thrown in the trash can. Um, another one was a state. <laughs> yeah. There was that story in, I don't remember which state it was. Now they've said, oh, that was an accident. Mm -hmm. It's kind of ironic that the ballots were all voting for the same candidate that they were accidentally thrown away, but it was an accident. And I put quotation marks around that, which our listening public can't hear, obviously. And then the stories about just unsolicited ballots sent out in states. So it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see how the election will sort out. And we may have more than hanging chads this year. Uh, obviously, but we won't have them in Dent County or Missouri, right? And we won't have them in Missouri. That's where That's I was. Right. I think Secretary of State Ashcroft over the last couple of years has really worked hard to make sure everything in the election process is clean, uh, yeah. the integrity of the process is is good, and yes. uh, and yes. really been impressed with what I've seen. And I know you all, you and your clerks, you work with them, mm -hmm. with him all the time. Mm -hmm. Thanks. There. In fact, the Secretary of State's office will be sending out a brochure, a little flyer to every voter, household voter, um, coming up between uh, this week, October 1st and October 5th. So voters will be seeing something from the Missouri Secretary of State's office. And it's just kind of um, explaining the options. So it's explaining the mail-in versus the absentee, um, what has to be notarized, what doesn't, how you can apply for that. So it's a nice little chart for voters to um, kind of educate themselves on that. I think uh, we might need to make a point as well. You want to pay attention, folks need to pay attention to the mailing that comes from the Secretary of State's office, not from some of the other entities that are right. sending information yes. out about the election. Some of those contain erroneous mm -hmm. information, whether it's intentional or by accident, we mm -hmm. have no way of knowing, mm -hmm. but pay attention to what comes from the Secretary of State's office in the state of Missouri. Yes. J.I. Ashcroft's office. Yes. Or from Angie. Yes. Either one. Yes. Those are gold. A lot of those applications right now going out to voters, um, they are not from us. Um, they're not from us at all. So and they have some misinformation on there on some dates and deadlines and things like that. So. Um, have any question comes down to it, you call Angie's office mm -hmm. and you get the word that is fact. Seven two nine four one four four. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. And we are gearing up, getting ready to go. We've got our poll workers all in place and getting ready to do another training session with them at the end of the month. Um, got the polls all ready. Um, voters can expect to walk in the polls and see the sneeze shields again and um, remember s social distancing. Um, we'll have someone in place at every polling location to clean booths and help make sure that voters feel safe. So we would encourage our listeners to work hard at getting that their vote in, help Angie get to that goal of 80%. I she really that it really isn't her goal, that's her expectation. But maybe <laughs> yes. it's a goal in some respects that you know, it would be awesome if we saw 80% voting mm -hmm. uh, success right here in uh, Dent County. That'd be just a cool deal. I, it would be awesome. I would like to touch a little bit about those absentee ballots Go and right mail-ins that come back in the mail to my office. We get lots of phone calls saying, what is your process? And those are actually sealed. Most of them are notarized that have to be notarized. Well, all of them are. And the ones, like I said, that are disabled or ill, they don't have to get them notarized, those absentees. But those come back into my office and the signatures are verified so we do that and then they go into a lock sealed box those are not open until election day and we have an absentee team 
of four, two from each major party. Um, they get sworn in, they take an oath, and they start their process of breaking open that bo that lock on that box, opening up everything, and going through. We have kind of a triple check in our office. And that's even done with, at the courthouse. And that's done at the courthouse, yes, in, a, in an office that's, you know, they're in there by themselves, and I do have tech support there. I'm there. Um, but, you know, we have secure measures in place for that, so... The ones that walk in and vote absentee, we keep a hand ledger, an old-fashioned hand ledger list. So it's kind of a triple check. So every person that requests an absentee ballot or a mail-in ballot um, or walks in our office to vote, we keep an old-fashioned hand ledger list. We also have two system software systems in the computer that print out reports. We do a match with that. The poll pads, we do a match with the quantity of um, how many ballots are ran through the machine. Of course, we don't know the, the mm -hmm. outcome or anything or unofficial results, but we know the quantity. Anybody that runs their ballot through a machine at the polls on Election Day, they can see on the little uh, screen readout, you know, thank you for voting, and then there'll be like a little tally of how many actual ballots were cast through that machine. I did have a question kind of come to mind. It's backing up a bit, but that's good information, obviously, that you just shared, because folks do need to be aware of what the process is once their their uh, absentee ballot is submitted. What happens with the absentee ballots that require notarization <clears throat> that arrive without that required notarization? They are rejected by the absentee team. So... They are actually in a spoiled envelope, um, and they are rejected. So it's critical yes. if your ballot requires notarization that you get that done. Now, we've been, and as Angie said earlier, uh, you can get that done. Some places do require uh, a small payment for that notarization to be done. I know we've been announcing, I don't think it's inappropriate to say it right here, that the uh, Salem Public Library director, Linda Walford is a notary, and there's no charge for her service. Uh, we've been announcing that in Civic Record for quite a while now. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you don't have somebody that regularly notarizes legal documents for you, there's another option that's really pretty read readily available. Yeah, mm -hmm. good. And there should be no charge on an absentee ballot but they can charge on a mail-in ballot. So it, it does get very confusing. Oh, it does. <laughs> wow. But just call us. There Glad you go. Glad to answer your questions. And again, you want to remind folks, if they perhaps have moved since they voted the last time, be yes. sure and check with your office. Yes. 729-4144 just to verify where their vote, voting location is. That will help speed things up at the polls. With a large turnout, it even gets more critical that people know where they're supposed to be voting and not be at the wrong spot. Right, right. You have that to happens. vote where you reside at in the right voting districts. So if you need to update your name, address, please come in and do so as soon as possible. I know there's other ways of doing that. If you can't come into the office, you can do it online through the Missouri Secretary of State's website. Um, they actually have a place where you can register to vote, change an address, um, but call our office to make sure that we do get that, that that whole process was completed on your end and that we receive it on our end. Mm -hmm. um, you can do it through the License Bureau, Division of Family Services, Health Center. There's other ways of changing your address, but just make sure that you call us or you receive a new voter identification card with your new address on it, your new voting districts, and your polling place to go to because if you wait until Election Day and show up and um, don't take care of that, it, it could... Um, hold up some lines, and you could be driving to another whole new location, and it, it can be very time-consuming. Angie already has enough irons in the fire on Election Day <laughs> that they'd really like to minimize those types of <laughs> questions and situations. Uh, and we kind of, she chuckles about it, but I know I've heard stories from her at the commissioner's meetings about some of the complications they've run into with people thinking they were to vote one place and all the hassle to go through to find out the exactly correct place for them to be casting their ballot. Yes. Yes, <laughs> you can take that take care of that as soon as possible. Yeah. 
Now, it's it, not really. It helps a, everyone. Is there a is there a deadline for a name change? Um, if you are already registered to vote, no. Um, you can come in, change your name, change your address up until election day. Okay. Um, but the sooner the better because our poll pads are ready to go the day before the election. They're ready. They're ready to be set up. And um, that will be another phone call that that judge has to make, that poll worker has to make to our office just to make sure and where they need to go, and they'll have to fill out a new voter registration application there with their new name. Um, registering to vote, if you've never registered in Nick County, yes, October 7th, That's next right. Wednesday. Yeah. But if you're already registered and you need to just update your name and your address, you can do that up until Election Day, but do it before then. Just out of courtesy, folks, help them out a little bit. Uh, they've got enough situations going on. That, uh, that would just be very thoughtful and courteous of folks to take care of that beforehand. And I would like to remind everyone, polls open at 6 a.m., close at 7 p.m. There is no electioneering, um, so that includes no shirts, no literature, no buttons, no hats with a particular candidate or candidates or questions that are on that ballot for that particular election. That's important because I know important. that's been an issue not that long ago. It is. And there is um, several polling locations in Dent County that do not allow electioneering. So you're not allowed to even be on the premises um, passing out literature within the 25 feet by law. Okay. So. Yeah, by law, they can't do it within 25 feet. No. Within 25 feet or inside the building, no electioneering. But some of the but locations don't allow people to be out there on the property, period, beyond at the 25 all. feet. But that, yeah. that's up to the people, the that's properties up to where the, the yes. polling location is. We had that issue arose one time uh, at one of the schools years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway. And we had it at the fire department in August. And mm -hmm. so we, you know, had to tell them that they do have a policy on file with us that says no electioneering on their property. So I would encourage candidates, if they want to electioneer, to contact that polling location to make sure they don't have a policy on hand. Mm -hmm. That's good advice. Yep. Mm -hmm. And this year's, on this year's ballot, there are, some, there are some several issues. I mean, mm -hmm. besides the candidates, there's a couple of, uh, of uh, amendments, state amendment issues on the ballot. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's probably worth mentioning, sample ballots are available. Yes. Too, right? People yes. can come pick one up. Probably be a good idea for people to look. You'll also have a sample ballot will be published in the newspaper mm -hmm. prior to the election. It'd be good if people mm -hmm. would get a look at the sample ballot, either read it in the paper or, or mm -hmm. pick up a sample ballot and uh, check out these constitutional issues and, and issue to go ahead and put in, install term limits on statewide offices besides what besides governor and treasurer. I mm -hmm. think right now are limited to two four year terms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that one's kind of tricky which way you vote and right depending on you know how you want to vote well, basically you want to if you want to if you want to install term limits on the rest of the statewide offices you'd vote yes and if you don't you'd vote no is the way i understand the way it's written does that sound right Angie? um the question is do you want to amend the missouri constitution to extend the two year two term restriction um, that currently applies to the governor, the treasurer, and the lieutenant governor, and secretary of state, auditor, and the attorney general. So yes or no. So, so if you want term limits on those, you vote yes. And if you don't, vote no. And then we have constitutional amendment number three, which actually um, has three issues within that amendment. Yep. So we should be getting some plain language on that coming up in the next week or two from the Secretary of State's office. Um, I would encourage you to uh, research it um, before you go vote at the polls on both yep. of those. And those will be coming out, the sample ballots in the paper, like Daryl said, the week well, and two weeks prior to the I, election. And I pay for this program so I can editorialize a little bit. That's a good point. If you want term limits for people, you have that ability every time you go vote. Yes. Uh, who wants the government to tell them that they got to change grocery stores or, or doctors every mm -hmm. eight years or whatever? But at any rate, but the other one, the, and that has to do with that first one, so whatever. Uh, if you want term limits on everybody, on all of those, then you vote yes. Uh, and if you don't, then then vote no. The other one, 
as she said, it has several different issues with it, but the key thing in it has to do with how representative, state representative districts, senatorial districts would be set up. And that's constitutional amendment number three. And, it, and again, it has to do with drawing state legislative districts. It has nothing to do with the federal. But under the, under the amendment that was passed a couple of years ago, they changed how our state representative districts, for instance, could be drawn up. Right now, they are contiguous. For some reason, they felt the need to try to make it balanced somehow or another in the Republican, Democrat, so forth, so on. At any rate, this thing's a mess, and people have no idea what a mess it's going to be until it happens. When we find out, Dent County ends up being part of a district. Uh, the other part of it can be uh, some voter voting area up by St. Louis or Kansas City, what? Uh, and it, it's just, it's really insane and what happened there, and people don't realize it. We've got to get this back to where at least it's the same geographical area that you elect your representative from and uh, to go represent your interest. Uh, so at any rate, so that's it. That one, that one needs to pass. It really goes ahead and leaves in place the, the ban on gifts to lobbyists and legislators and reducing campaign contributions and so on. But the biggest thing in it is it does go ahead and modify how these districts will be drawn up. And uh, we, need, we need to fix that or we're going we're gonna to wish it somehow or another it had been. We're going we're gonna to reap a terrible price on that one if it stays like it is. Okay, so anyway, Daryl's editorial, and if you want more about it, just contact me. Get, get a copy of the ballot. Read a get a copy of that ballot. It is interesting to me, as I heard you explain that, that somebody in their great field of wisdom sees how we can take a couple of issues that are really important that need to happen, and we slip something else with it that maybe doesn't need to happen, and I'm not saying what Daryl just said does or does not need to happen, but they slip things together in an amendment that really are not at all related to one another. Well, I didn't really think by Constitution they were able to, supposed to be able to do that and put those things on the ballot that have too, di too many different uh, separate issues. You wouldn't and, think so. And I, I don't even think that ought to be on the ballot. Like that. It should not have even been on the ballot a couple of years ago because the same thing happened, and that's how we ended up where we're at. It's going to end up getting battled out in court at some point. I can see it coming. But uh, at any rate, it's, uh, it's just kind of a bad deal. But I also wanted to mention, too, that we also have uh, judges on the ballot. And that's always a tough one. And uh, I found sometimes one of the best things to do if you've got the time, and again, look at those sample ballots and look at these judges. And sometimes you may even want to go back and see, uh, see who appointed those judges. And uh, cause if you figure out who appointed those judges, that might give you a better idea whether you would really want that person on that court anyway. So really and truly, I mean, you might sure. take a look at that. So anyway. Well, and what we were alluding to, these different, in terms of the subject matter in relation being in the same bill, isn't that a result of the reduction in number of signatures required for the initiative petition? Uh, it appears to be, yeah. Uh, so when we allowed that to happen, and I don't know, I don't, did we vote on that? <laughs> or did it just get decreed? It just somehow that, got done, yeah, unfortunately. We went from, I don't even remember what the old figure was, but it came down to about 20% of what it originally was, if my memory serves me right. That's not very many signatures. It's like 50,000 now, and at one time it was 250,000 signatures. Yep. Or at least something in those ballparks. Uh, don't well, quote me on that. It's to not me, the process has gotten has gotten messed up a little bit on that whole deal they can they'll they'll pay people to go to a large shopping center There's complex and yeah. stick a stick a deal in front of people and it says are you for clean water and, uh, and if they say, yeah, I'll sign here, but there's all kinds of things that that thing addresses and has nothing to do with water. And next thing you know, you got a, a deal on the ballot that doesn't have anything to do with what people signed up for. So at any rate, that's that's kind of what the mess we've gotten into on how easy it is to get some stuff on a on a ballot and, and change and do things that you uh, you really wouldn't, wouldn't want to do if you had time to really think it through. But anyway. Well, Daryl really wanted to put the emphasis today, I believe, on the importance of getting out and voting. Yes. But most importantly is make sure and do some research in advance of what issues you're voting on. I think Daryl and Angie both have made that comment, should have made it crystal clear that, uh, you know, get yourself educated. Just don't go in for the first time at the polls. Look at that ballot and say, oh, my, well, let's see. This sounds okay. This sounds okay. I don't know about this, but I'll vote in favor of it. Anyway, that's no way to <laughs> exercise your privilege and your right to vote in the United States of America. I guess that was my editorialization. There you go. Anyway. <laughs>
All right. Yeah. Anything else on? Well, and mainly we wanted to emphasize, and, I want, and that's <clears throat> what I wanted Angie to come in for, is to emphasize and clarify the integrity of the voting process and how it mm -hmm. works, what's going on. Because this year there's probably been more question about it than than normal years, mm -hmm. right? Oh, know. yeah. With everything going on in the national news and – yeah, and and it's scary. It's scary out there what's going on in other states. And I, you know, I just want Dent County voters. I always say, you know, thank goodness we live in Missouri. I feel like we're in the heart of America right here, and um, we have some good measures in place and good standards. And and you can feel like that your vote is counted. It does matter, um, and it is secure and safe. Yeah, and whatever yeah. our listeners do, and anybody would come in contact with. Public, we should encourage them, and I know these two do, still encourage them to get out and vote and learn about this process. You know, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, this is the only election we'll have to worry about that. No, it's not. We probably, sadly but true, will probably be concerned about the pandemic for more than just this election. We hope not, we pray not, mm -hmm. but uh, you know. Mm -hmm. We don't know what we don't the know. next round of elections right. next spring will bring. That so, is correct. It's uh, been a crazy year for sure. Four elections and one one gets moved due to COVID, <laughs> and it, it's been a it's a quite challenging year for us election authorities. Absolutely. <laughs> I think it'd be fair, Angie, we probably ought to give a shout out and a thank you to those locations, different entities here in the county yes. that let us use their locations to, to vote. Yes, it's, I am so blessed to have very, very good polling locations. Um, and those administrative and leaders that um, have those locations, they have been wonderful to work with. Um, it, it's just anything they can do to improve, um, to make the the voter have a, a good process of voting and and they work with me on that um, it, it's been great and I have good veteran poll workers and um, we've got some new ones that signed up and they're going to come to training um, we've got our veterans um, our seasoned poll workers that's already in place but you never know someone may get sick or something happen and um, so we got you know a few new ones that's going to come and um, we may have them actually cleaning um, so they can see how this first big election, how the process works. But I have some really good poll workers. Good deal. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. You could, you'd welcome uh, anyone hearing this that would yes. be interested in perhaps helping be a poll worker sometime. Uh -huh. Let you know. And Definitely. It gets to be a challenge sometimes the week before as things it happen does. and people. It does. We have to have equal number, Democrat and Republican of the two major parties working. So it's, um, you know, that's a law. So, um yeah, we we um, we have several good poll workers, and we're all a team. We work as a team together. Again, that leadership that Angie uh, puts in place uh, does reflect in this uh, awesome situation she's got going on. Good Thank job, you. Gal. Thank you. I enjoy it. I love my job. I enjoy well, it. Well, you have to. Again, <laughs> we're back to talking about those guys that she has to work with, and so she has <laughs> to do her job. <laughs> Yep. says, oh, my gosh, I thought you were going to leave that one alone. Well, I thought about it, but Angie yeah. needs all the I have a good group I work with. I, You know, we talk about it. We go to our association conferences, and, and sometimes we hear some not-so-good stories throughout Missouri and courthouses, and I can honestly say that, you know, we, we have a good group. I've had good groups in the past. I mean, mm. it's just Dent County is very blessed. We have work well together regardless of politics or regardless of – um, decisions that have to be made. And, and we've heard about every office holder say the same thing you're saying. When they come mm -hmm. back from some of these meetings, they think, wow, we got a good bunch of people in Dade County taking care of stuff at our courthouse and, we do. and our stuff. Yeah, We do. You, you yeah. know, you all mentioned that, and I had the flashback back to when I was teaching, and I'd go to other communities sometimes, and when I was in state leadership, even to other states, and hear them talk about this particular problem was going on or that particular situation, and you go back home and say, I've got a lot better than I thought I did. Yes, definitely. And that's, that's what I, I yep. really hear them yep. say. That's yeah. cool. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank yep. you for having me today. We appreciate thank you, you coming in. Thank you for letting in. me share. Yeah. I'm sure yep. Daryl appreciates more than I do, but it's always good to see Angie. I haven't been able to get up to cover as many commissioners' meetings as I used to, and so it's good to see her. Yep. Yeah. Stan is usually, which would be a good spot for us here, to give a shout-out to Stan. We wish Stan the best. Stan's... Uh, uh, been a little bit under the weather, and uh, so uh, we he's miss. in recovery mode, and yeah. he pops in here even 
evening and he does some things here and then i don't think it was cor- it wasn't coronavirus no. so he had some other issues that uh, uh, bit but him and, and it's not his heart a little you bit. know there's yep. pe- people afraid that it was his heart uh the way things went down friday night at the ball game and uh so last night i was in the meeting and that specifically i was asked or asked that or said it's not his heart so uh that was a pretty big concern on a lot of people's part and so we're getting we're getting him recovered. Uh, you know, he's getting a little cantankerous, so I think that's a – I hear. I haven't talked to him, so I'm just taking this that, Well, that's according to Sherry. Third party. But, uh... Uh, yeah, it's, a cor- <laughs> it's according to more than one lady. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, so that's a sign that uh, he is He's getting back to normal. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure I, I will probably – well, I'll, I'll fess up right off the bat like I did a while ago about my mistake at the beginning of this of not hitting a button. But, you know, I'm sure he heard that and says, Bob, turn that thing off. Get that music <laughs> off, Bob. So, it hey, Stan, we're, we know you're out there. We know you're listening, Stan. <laughs> you're there. Yep. Get well, buddy. You bet. But, but, I, hope you, but if you, I hope he didn't listen to the Cardinal Pro uh, ball game last night. He might have had a terrible relapse. Uh, that was... Uh, kind of a heart-wrenching deal but at yeah. any rate stan get well yes okay. absolutely yes and angie, angie thanks for coming i appreciate you it bet thank you, you for yep. having me yep. you'll let her get back to her office and yep. carry on her duties thank you, you bet. you're welcome to stay for the rest of the program or oh, you can yeah. go take care of business which it might be quite do. enlightening but you've probably heard <laughs> a lot of it so anyway angie take care i get angie's mic turned down there it's uh She's going to leave us and leave some other information with Daryl for okay. the remainder of the program. You need this on the calendar. Okay. Okay. Very good. Take Thanks care, again. Andy. Thanks again, Angie, for coming. We do appreciate it. It was uh, thought it was timely and information people need Absolutely. to hear. Absolutely. That deadline to register to vote, as you said, is coming up yeah. October seventh, uh, next week. That's right. So uh, right around the corner, going to be here before we know it. Yep. And this nice weather will make it get here faster. Most likely. <laughs> and you know, it was, uh, it was really kind of funny. Uh, when I was on the air a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned the importance of this election coming up. And one of the things, uh, one of the things I talked about said, uh, you know, sometimes when we're talking about governor or president or whatever, uh, one of the things you need to think about is, is whether you might care or may, whether you might not care for the individual himself. Sometimes what you also need to take into account is when that, while them people are in office, they will appoint judges to appeals courts, various courts, Supreme Court, uh, you know, th- that the U.S. Supreme Court, where the rubber hits the road, mm-hmm. you know, the legislators and things can do whatever they want, and then it ends up in the courts, and the courts will interpret it however they decide they want to interpret it, and especially when it finally gets to the Supreme Court. And uh, so it said, you know, sometimes you better think about what type of people this candidate or that candidate will appoint to these uh, high courts. And uh, lo and behold, later that afternoon, found out that uh, one of the Supreme Court justices of the United States had passed away. And so the president will be nominating a uh, replacement to that. And it appears that that replacement will be uh, will probably be put in. So and it just uh, matter of fact, I got a call the next day to, from somebody asking me if I had a premonition on that morning <laughs> on the radio. About that. But it is but it is true in all seriousness. I don't care what party you are. It, it's, it's serious. You, uh, either way, you need to think about who uh, the type of people they will put in uh, in different positions of authority and things. So uh, at any rate, but again, on this year's ballot for Missouri, these two uh, these two constitutional amendments need to be studied. The, the one as far as on term limits, whatever, it's just my personal feeling that we have the ability of term limits. Every time we have an election, pay attention, and, uh, and if they need to go, they need to go. Uh, you know, if I need to change doctors every eight years, that should be my decision, or if I need to, this or that, or that if I need different people to take care of business for me wherever that should be to me that should be the decision of the of the electorate themselves not some automatic rule that applies but whatever but the other one though the constitutional amendment number three on how these legislative districts are drawn up well that one i'm I'm, i'll tell you i'll i'll just stake my whole deal everything on it that one needs to change and needs to change bad we we do not want to wake up and find out you know I, i really don't understand how why some unelected person or group gets to decide this area is Republican, so therefore we're going to go over to this area that's Democrat and put them together. I mean, I know people. My, uh, uh, okay, I'm one party. My family was another party. And I know I've got people that vote on both sides of that 
of that ballot. Mm -hmm. So who gives somebody the authority to say, well, yeah, but you're this and you're, or you're that? Well, wait a minute. I mean, we're all Dent Countyans, and the people of Dent County ought to be able to elect a person that represents Dent County. Right. Or Dent County or whatever we're a part it of. If it needs to be Dent, with... if it has to be Dent and Reynolds or Dent Shannon in Oregon, right. at least we, rep we elect somebody that represents those three counties. And, you know, the, the makeup of the citizenship in those counties like we are right now is, uh, is more similar than what it would be if we were thrown in, as Daryl said a while ago, with a certain part of St. Louis County or some other urban county. It doesn't matter which urban county you talk about. But well, well, let's, let's back up a little bit. It wasn't that long ago. Okay, what if, what if those areas suddenly slowly change to where they're more similar in voting to the people where you're at? And how do they find, how do they find that area? To supposedly balance it out, I just don't make sense of it. Sorry, maybe I'm just too simple and stupid, but that's okay. Yeah. I've been. I've, I don't think that's the, the first time I was. I don't think that. that's a problem. I think the problems with the issue that somebody has tried to. I think cram the intention might have been good, but I don't well, think probably. that the details. Uh, I don't think the t details flesh out very well on that. Yeah. So, uh, on Amendment Three, then uh, we need to get that fixed. And why? Why you would have an issue like that on an amendment that has such. Uh, an amendment that says about banning gifts to, to legislators, reducing campaign contributions, and then legislative redistricting, all on one constitutional amendment. Uh, I, I, but anyway, it's, uh, but anyway, there's a lot at stake in this year's election, and I said this a couple weeks ago too. Uh, religious freedom is at stake in this year's election. Uh, your Second Amendment gun rights versus gun control are at stake in this year's election. Uh, right to life versus abortion. Uh, private property rights, and uh, and then all these other issues that we talked about on the constitutional amendments, uh, judges, and so on. So it's it's going to be a big election, I think, and I think um, I hope Angie's right. I hope we get an eighty percent turnout or so. But I'm of that eighty percent, though, I hope they've really looked and studied and thought about right. these issues and the candidates and their positions on these issues. It's a monumental election, without a doubt, and it'll be quite interesting to see the final outcome, which. Probably won't be election night, but sometime, hopefully, within a month. Well, with some of the stuff going on in other states, I said this only half joking here a while back. I said I, I hope by this time this, by this time next year we know who won the, uh, who won the election, and I'm sure we will. It's but it is an interesting time, and it's more interesting all the time. But anyway, again, I do appreciate Angie coming in and helping clarify what happens, and uh, I do hope folks understand and realize how, how lucky we are and that we have uh, great integrity in our elections here in our in our county and, and in the state as well. So, uh, and, I, and I'm sure that the amount of time Daryl has spent on his program this morning should amplify the fact that how important this whole process is for this year's election. So we're not, I know we've gone on and on about the importance of it, but uh, it is. It's just uh, critical critical time in our nation's history our state's history and our nation's mm -hmm. history so well we're very blessed and sometimes i think we take it for for granted but we're very blessed to live in a country where we're able to go to the polls and make these decisions ourselves the electorate does and uh you know it isn't that way in every country absolutely and not. uh we get aggravated sometimes with the system or some of the various details of it and some get hung up over some of those but it still is uh, probably the best system that i know of in the world and it's worked very well for us for over 200 years, and it uh, hopefully will continue. But only if people will not take it for granted and if they will take it serious and uh, study the issues and make good informed, uh, informed decisions based on their conscience and uh, so on. Okay. So, and all thank, right. Thanks but, again to Angie on behalf of KSMO for coming in to add her insight to uh, the topic at hand. Yep. Daryl's got some information on county business, I'm sure. Well, we've got a little bit of other stuff to cover, too. Uh, I would, I would first I'll just talk a little bit road and bridge. Uh, we had a couple of th we got a couple of deals that have been going on uh, in District Two. Commissioner Larson uh, did mention that Dent County Road 2070 was closed for a period of time while the crews rebuilt a uh, low water crossing. And those are those are pretty big undertakings, especially when it's on a creek that's uh, still running a little and you mm. still got water you have to deal with. It's one thing if if it's completely dry, but at any rate. Uh, they did completely do a rebuild of that low water crossing. That's a county road that runs uh, uh, from uh, up by Lake Spring, cuts up through to up towards uh, the Annette area. So at any rate, they got that uh, 
uh, road crossing rebuilt. Uh, with this is uh, we've done several of these over the last uh, few years. They're uh, they're pretty pretty uh, pretty big projects and the, and they cost a lot of money, but uh, uh, it, it's been it's been possible for us to go ahead and get in and do several of these over the last few years as a result of the quarter cent sales tax right. that voters passed in 2015. So I uh, did want to mention that, but there are several more additional crossings that are, that are on the, uh, the table to do. Yeah. Typically the best time to do these though, actually ends up being about every year, about September. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems like August or September, somewhere in there, uh, we'll have a kind of a dry stretch of weather and the guys have got to have several days of pretty good dry weather. Uh, where they can go in and tear out, pour concrete, form form up, pour concrete, and and to build a new uh, uh, new bridge crossing or, or low water crossing. So at any rate, so we got more uh, several more on the deal, but we have gotten here in just the last few years uh, several of these crossings rebuilt, and and I believe that road is back now open. To, okay. Uh, so Good. and then uh, and then in District Two, Commissioner Purcell, he's been working on and continues to work on uh, a deal we call a two flap project. We'll flap. It's just an acronym for Federal Lands Access Program, and that's uh, a program out there where we can access money to uh, to work on a county road that goes to or through federal lands. So, uh, Commissioner Purcell has been uh, working on a couple of these. One of them being on the uh, the road that comes down the hill, the county road that comes down the hill to Tanvat. Tanvat is uh, probably the, I guess the uppermost. Uh, access to the National Scenic Riverways. Mm -hmm. So it qualified on that, and we want to ask, asphalt that particular stretch of road. It would be a great addition. It's a very difficult road to keep in uh, oh, it is. Keep maintenance and keep it in good shape. It's a lot of traffic and just the nature of it, and this will help uh, immensely on that. I would bet if uh, Dennis had kept score, he's probably had more complaints on that road than any other road in his yep. district. Yeah, it's a lot of traffic it does. from folks. It would be nice if we could do the whole thing from Tanvat on around to uh, Montauk Park, but that's a whole nother issue yeah. and a whole separate deal. And at some point down the road, maybe we can, but uh, for right now, getting this one done, you're right. Uh, that one there is a, is a constant source of, of problem. And, and it all comes back to the difficulty in maintaining that, that road with the traffic and, yeah. uh, and the, the way it is. So getting it asphalted uh, will help on some of that. Uh, and another piece of that, the other flap project has to do with uh, building another bridge, replacing a low water crossing with a bridge on Sinkin Creek over down in the bunker area. We, uh, we done one of those a couple years ago, not through flap, but just through a, a separate forest service program. But this would be a, a flap project and we'll get a, a new uh, new bridge built down there to replace a low water crossing and, and make that property more uh, make that road more usable e even when the waters might be uh, a little high and that'll be so that'll be good for that area so and then otherwise for sports for the road and bridge it's just been regular grading I tell you there was a time there when it almost got too dry mm -hmm. it was getting close to being too dry to grade it uh, got, got serious dry we didn't get very much rain here in September uh, of this year but uh, they did finally get a little bit and got enough to be able to get some things done. They've been doing brush cutting and screening gravel, et cetera. And uh, would mention too, Treasurer Danita Williams was in, gave us our, our latest cart receipts. And uh, uh, cart receipts is your fuels tax, as we've talked about about every month, fuels tax uh, that we receive from the state. It's the fuel tax that uh, the state uses for uh, maintaining our highways. Counties and cities get a portion of that. And it's a pretty good portion. It's about 700000 a year is what we get from that. So we do watch that. It's a major, uh, major part of our funds. And uh, we get that uh, every month. Uh, this year, it's been trending down pretty heavily simply because of the uh, COVID deal. And, and again, this is, this is tax. And it also has to do with taxes on sales and motor vehicles and uh, so forth and things like that. So uh, it is down this year uh, about $28,000 from 2019, down uh, about five and a half percent. So uh, it's interesting but, because. Well, again, though, I'm sure as you've talked to other commissioners, mm -hmm. that's still, even though we're down, still not as uh, severe as some other counties. Yeah, yeah, it's not down as bad as some of the some of the other counties have reported on that. So, yeah, we're lucky there. And, and then the flip of that is we're lucky that sales tax itself, as we've talked about, has been up a uh, year to date. Uh, over the previous year. So uh, sales tax for road and bridge, that quarter cent sales tax that I mentioned earlier for road and bridges year to date is up about 23,000. But then we're down about 28,000 for uh, from our cart receipts. So net for the 
for Road and Bridge. We're, we're down about 5,000 over what we would have been at this time uh, last year. So we'll keep watching that. And of course that impacts uh, what we do budget wise and so forth and so on. Uh, that pretty well brings us up to date on Road and Bridge. I do want to mention our CARES Act funds. We do still have CARES Act funds available for public entities, for private small business entities. Uh, we did approve three CARES Act fund requests for some public entities. They were all schools. Uh, uh, Salem R80 uh, was approved for 18300 and some dollars. Our, uh, Green Forest R2 was uh, approved for 14600 and uh, Northwood R4 for about $36,500 in CARES Act funds, and they'll be getting those to reimburse them for cost incurred as a result of the COVID mm -hmm. deal. And uh, we did raise the limit for public entities to 150,000, the total that they can uh, apply for and get, and uh, that's in the, in the aggregate all together at one time. We may raise that again if we need to, and the funds are available. Uh, and we also raised the, the total that private small businesses will be eligible for to get up to 50000 in total. So uh, we've had some that had already applied for uh, uh, for the 20000 and uh, the, the, we have funds there that are available, and it's to be used. And so if, uh, if they can go ahead and reapply and have qualifying expenses that they can uh, get reimbursed for, we want them to get it. So we did raise that also to 50000 So, and again... The funds are still available. It is being the administration of all that is being handled for the Dent County and several of our counties through MRPC. And uh, anybody would have any questions at all, either on, from the public entities or from private small businesses. And private small businesses can be a, a lot of different things: doctors' offices, restaurants, uh, uh, sawmills, etc., what have you. Uh, if you have questions, please contact Kelly Sink or Eva Voss at MRPC, and that's two six five two nine nine three. And they'll, they are handling all of this. They, they take care of every bit of it. They're keeping up to date on the latest information from the state and the feds as to what expenses qualify and what don't. Sometimes that changes a little bit, but they're keeping up to date on that on behalf of the counties. And they then take those requests, look at them. And they're not going to just say, well, your request doesn't qualify. Uh, you know, they may, if you get it, they may have to send, get a hold of you and they will and say, you know, uh, we just need additional information and this is what we need in order to get it through. They want to get it through for you, uh, but they'll, they'll get back. They're not going to just, uh, they're not just looking to reject things out of hand. And we've so, been reading the news release about the business breakfast, so to speak, for, with Danish and coffee next Thursday morning at uh -huh, SVU, uh -huh. uh, that Kelly Sink is, I don't know if she's going to join it virtually or be there live. Sally Burbridge is going to be, moderating it and Sally will be there uh, live and anybody in any business the most important thing about that that I've mentioned earlier today in our news spots is the fact that Kelly will be sir, uh, sharing what some other communities and entities are doing in terms of ways that they are utilizing the mm -hmm. CARES funds and I know in visiting with Daryl and Commissioner Skiles and Commissioner Purcell they want to see the dollars that the county has been allotted spent and so if there are, if you might, if you think you might be in a position where you could utilize some CARES funds, think about that meeting. You'll have mm -hmm. the opportunity to join it live or virtually. Yep. And just contact Sarah Hultine at, uh, at the University Extension, and Sarah will get you a, a seat reserved or get you set up to join the meeting virtually and find out more about how to utilize CARES Act yes. funding. Now, I would... I would point out, of course, these are public funds, and so the information from the entities that have gotten them is public information, and they can share that. So if that's something that weighs heavily on a person's decision that they don't want, they're not going to share personal information as far as, you know, Social Security numbers, nothing like that. But, I mean, they will be sharing what, what entities have done, basically, yeah, what they got reimbursement for to pay for, and uh, because uh, that's, that's, not, that's not information that is... Uh, uh, classified or secret it's public funds and so it's right. out there and so yeah. but yeah that'll be a good meeting and I look forward to Kelly I think Kelly will probably be here for it but I'm not sure how they've got uh, how that ended up being set up probably depends on a lot of what's going on between now and then too so but at any rate we do want folks if they can use these funds at all please call please uh, check with Kelly or Eva about qualifying and what they need to do to qualify and access those dollars yeah. so 
and we've had I know we've had several several more cases since school got back in uh, that have affected folks in the county and affected businesses and so on so uh, check that out uh, otherwise I'll just mention here uh, before I get done we've had several been several meetings work goes on uh, uh, and the folks know that have listened I am uh, uh, we are members of the County Commission Association of Missouri. I am one of the officers. I'll be uh, president of that association next year. Our chief responsibility as an association is to provide the uh, uh, state mandated training that all county commissioners have to get every year. Uh, I put that together. Uh, it's proven to be a challenge for this coming year as we look at where we've been having it for the last several years at Columbia, had a contract with that hotel and so on. Uh, our training next year in light of what's happening and with COVID and the prospect that it uh, might be very difficult to meet in Columbia and get 300 com some commissioners together in one spot for training we'll be doing it virtually but we still have a contract and and you know at some point this thing we're gonna we're gonna get over the hill over the hump on this thing and I think we'll be able to get back and and uh, and meet like we have because I'll tell you there's nothing we can do virtual and we will put together a virtual training but there's still nothing beats everybody being able to get together and discuss and visit about things and issues and problems that you've had or projects that you've done and uh, and how it's happened and what you got into and you just can't beat visiting one-on-one -on -one with those folks and and doing it like that and trying to do a virtual or a zoom a meeting with 300 and some commissioners is is just not uh, there's just no way that it'll be the same but uh, we'll put together training that will be a work but at any rate in the meantime we had to get back with the uh, hotel in Columbia and uh, our current CCAM president and treasurer and I did meet at the Holiday Inn Executive Center with the owner and his management staff uh, about future commission training and uh, contract issues and so we uh, have worked out that we have a contract extension through uh, 2023 so that was just one of the, one meeting or something that I had to go to to try to help get ironed out what we were going to do in those future years out and how we could do that also mentioned that I did have a meeting with the Ozark River Solid Waste Management District Executive Board and uh, serve on that board as well and we did uh, review and score grant applications for waste reduction and recycling we had nine applications come in that uh, requesting about two hundred forty thousand dollars and for those folks who maybe haven't heard in the past these these dollars come from the Department of Natural Resources as a result of a Senate bill that was passed many years ago and as a result of that bill there is a fee that is assessed at uh, landfills and it is uh, for waste it's uh, so much a ton that is assessed and collected and then that money from those uh, fees DNR uh, then sends out to waste solid waste management districts to work on projects reducing waste recycling what have you with the overall goal simply of reducing the amount of waste going in the landfills and to more safely safely environmentally sound ways of addressing some of these things there's a lot of things we've done uh, with this uh, over the years but at any rate uh, we have about two, $240,000 being requested it looks like our amount allocation uh, this year will be about 175,000 so obviously everybody doesn't get everything they want and uh, we did review those spent a lot of time going over the applications and scored them in the various areas and now uh, the executive board will meet again this coming Tuesday and we will make final decision on on who gets how much on those uh, on those requests so and then uh, would mention also in one of our meetings we did have uh, uh, Grant Hamlet administrator for the sheltered workshop along with Joe Bruno the workshop manager they came in to share with the Commission what their grant request will be for this coming year 2021 from the Senate bill 40 board and they will be requesting one hundred ninety three thousand seventy two dollars for uh, sheltered workshop uh, uh, operations and last year they received about seventy three thousand so um, obviously a big difference and there's a uh, uh, some questions and difference of opinion about how much uh, how much of the of the SB 40 tax dollars that are raised locally should go directly to the workshop so that's an issue we'll have to be taking a look at with the SB 40 board and the workshop board and try to get some resolution to that as we go along uh, this here this fall and this winter and we, when we redo the budget also want to mention Bill Ard uh, has happy Pappy's campground down by Montauk has done a great job serving on our tourism board and his term is up and he's uh, not eligible to serve another term so we need someone who is active in the tourism related business 
that would be willing to serve on our local tourism board and they oversee the spending of the uh, uh, sales tax that's dedicated to tourism promotion and advertising so if anybody would be interested in that please uh, please let the commission know one of us commissioners or uh, uh, let Bill Ard or one of the members of the tourism committee know that they'd be interested in serving on that because it is the county commission does appoint those members so and other than that that kind of catches me up I did want to mention you know uh, Columbus Day is coming up. That's Monday, October 12th. So the courthouse will be closed on that day. But the commission, we have backed up and started meeting just one day a week versus two to just try to cut down on uh, extra traffic and exposure at the courthouse during the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, so since the courthouse will be closed on Monday, we will, the commission did decide that we will meet the next day on Tuesday, October the 13th at the courthouse for our regular commission meeting for that week. So, Bob, I believe that kind of okay, catches us up. He's not out of things to talk about, but he's out of things he wanted to talk about today. And we yeah. do appreciate Angie coming in, sharing uh, about the what's coming up in terms of getting registered for voting and all the different aspects of this year's general election coming up November 3rd. Is that the right date? I think November 3rd. Right yeah, so. Anyway, Daryl, been a pleasure visiting with you today. Yep. Uh, this wish, time on KSMO is always... Wish uh, the Tiger football team well tonight at Willow yeah. Springs and then the Salem Lady Tiger softball uh, team there. I guess they'll be in a tournament at Lynn and uh, the volleyball, uh, uh, our volleyball team. A lot of things going on still in sports. Some, some yeah. are being shut down, but ours are still going. So wish them... Uh, well, and their deal, and again, wish Stan a speedy recovery. And, you bet. And, uh, this time on KSMO is paid for by Daryl Skiles. The money out of uh, comes out of his pocket, not anybody else's pocket. It's no county funds are expended uh, for the time. It's just Daryl. So yeah, I appreciate his, him I'll coming. Right, you checking a little bit. He's gonna pay up just shortly. He'll see our collection agency, Miss Melba, shortly. <laughs> Again, my apologies for the snafu at the beginning of today's program. We just basically rewound and started over again. So you just kind of go get a cup of coffee if you listen to this program again on uh, on our website. Uh, just go get a cup of coffee during those first couple of minutes and then come back and we kicked her off again and got the program in to its fullest extent. Thanks, Daryl, for coming in today. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate the opportunity. We will be back here on October the 16th. Lord willing, and the creeks don't rise, as they say. So uh, until then, I hope everyone will be safe, happy, healthy, and God bless 